Joining me now is TRT World uh, Turkey analyst Ahmed Bedia, who was in Egypt during and after the massacre. Thanks so much for coming in, Ahmed. Thank you. Now, this is a story that is very personal to you, and we thank you for, for coming in and speaking to us. Um, now, you were also in Egypt during the massacre, as we've just said. What did you witness? I was actually in Egypt uh, to attend one of my brother's weddings. Um, I didn't realize uh, that... Uh, by the end of that, we were actually going to be burying my other brother, Amir, who was killed in Rabah Square. Uh, what we witnessed, uh, what I witnessed there, uh, I wasn't there during the actual uh, massacre, but I was there in the aftermath the next day because we had to go retrieve my brother's body and uh, do a funeral. And what I witnessed was, uh, you know, the worst thing that I've ever imagined or had seen. Um, hundreds of bodies that were killed, that were assembled in a makeshift morgue, uh, which was, I think, a mosque called Al Iman Mosque. Um, there was so much blood that when you walked into the, the carpets of the mosque, were just soaked um, in blood. And uh, people, none of the bodies were identified, so people had to uncover uh, almost every single body to find their loved ones. Uh, it was um, it was like a war, worse than a war zone. Um, so many bodies that were just gathered there that were killed. Uh, most of them were, um, it looked like they like my brother was uh, executed uh, with a single bullet uh, to either the neck or the head or the upper torso. Some of the bodies were torched from fire. Uh, it was gruesome. I'm very sorry. And six years on, what justice has been served for your brother and the hundreds of people that died? Um, in fact, none. No justice. Not a single person has, held, has been held accountable. Uh, for what happened that day, uh, not even the ones that carried out the shooting, not the ones that were in command. Obviously, the regime that uh, did this is now in power in Egypt, and um, no justice. In fact, uh, it's people who were protesting. Uh, some uh, over 600 people have been now sentenced to uh, prison, uh, you know, life uh, sentences or 25 years or more. Those are the people that were actually protesting, um, and some 75 people or more have been uh, sentenced to death. Um, in Egypt that participated in a protest. So there's no sense of justice as one person uh, that was there said, you know, you don't seek justice in a country where there is no justice. Um, wh who do you seek the justice from? And um, it's, and because of the lack of the accountability, it's uh, now uh, security forces in Egypt act with impunity. If nobody was held accountable for the murder of uh, a thousand people or more, uh, then they can get away with whatever uh, they want to now. Uh, with, um, you know, uh, extrajudicial uh, killings and disappearances and torture. So uh, definitely security forces are acting with impunity in Egypt. It's really incredible what you're telling us. And what's been the reaction of the international community? Um, very sad uh, because especially in the West, I'm an American citizen and in the West, um, uh, Western nations uh, regularly speak about the importance of human rights and democracy and uh, the rule of law. Well, um, their response has been hypocritical, uh, ignoring what's happening there. Uh, even some nations supporting the current regime in Egypt, not only turning a blind eye, and most uh, would refuse to even call it a coup. Now, of course, there are exceptions like Turkey, one of the few nations in the world that continues to call it a coup and has not restored relations with Egypt. Uh, so sh they should be commended for that. But uh, the rest of the world is turning a blind eye and continuing business as usual uh, in many ways because of the money that's been pumped in by countries like Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates uh, to buy off support all over the world. But despite the billions of dollars that have been pumped into Egypt to, to uh, support this regime, it continues to be very unpopular uh, in Egypt. And uh, politically, this was um, considered the Rabia Square um, massacre, the end of the Arab Spring. Do you agree with that? It probably it was a huge setback, obviously, for the Arab Spring because it shocked people and it, was, it showed how far these regimes are willing to go, how many people they're willing to kill to remain in power. So it was a setback, but they can't reverse what was, has, has already been done, lifting the veil of fear. Um, so uh, the Arab Spring is on pause, but uh, at some point it will continue or return. And today, how do you think that it's, it's affected everyday people in Egypt? I mean, you, you described uh, the fear, the lack of impunity and, and, accountab and accountability. Uh, 
you know, it's, Egypt is very polarized now uh, in many ways, uh, but uh, more and more, immediately after Rabat Square, there was a lot of confusion. There was a lot of, uh, you know, Sisi and his regime enjoyed some support from people there that uh, feared the Muslim Brotherhood uh, being in power. But now as time, as the promises of Sisi have not come to pass, and in fact, Egypt's economy is uh, worst off today. And not only uh, has the CC regime gone after the Muslim Brotherhood and Islamist groups, but now they've gone after anyone who uh, you know, opposes his regime. Uh, so socialists, uh, other left-leaning uh, you know, uh, movements and parties, many of their leaders are in jail. So the promises that uh, he said he would do did not happen. So there's, um, um, you know, people that don't believe in the Sisi regime anymore, uh, but many of the people, the leadership that can uh, be, you know, that's able to oppose him are now in jail. There are some 60,000 people in prison. Um, so it's, people are afraid, but they don't know what to do. Um, but I, he can't continue. I guess the regime can't continue. Uh, it's not sustainable to continue as they've been. Okay. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much Thank for so sharing much. Um, what is such a personal and, and difficult story for you. Thank you so much. Ahmed Bedia. Thank Thanks you. again.